now we move on to tools. Yes, tools are your specialty. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, you're saying about the uh, you're going to have to use a upholstery uh, thread. Right. The I tried to use Shoemaker thread once in my machine, and it wouldn't thread, oh, run okay. around, run at all. Is there something that it, in between there? Uh, Good point. Not all machines can handle all threads. Yes. Embroider machines go better with embroidery threads, which you never want to use for a costume because that will break on you. Yeah. You a normal cotton all purpose thread or polyester is recommended because fur is made out of polyester Fancy and acrylic fibers. Oh. Alright, so now moving on yes. to tools. You want a good pair of scissors? I have a crappy pair that I use for general purpose stuff. I got it in a five dollar sewing kit. Hey, it works. I was a little more fancy because the spring load, it really takes a lot of my hands because I am sitting there cutting all freaking day long. I have worked long days at Joanne Fabrics cutting fabric with bad scissors and blisters all over my hand. I just don't want to touch scissors for the next week or two. Um, you want an exacto knife, utility knife, or um, electric knives, which can be used to cut foam, which we'll get into when we go to working with foam. Yes. Um, one more point to me about scissors, I usually have, I always have two pairs. One is a general crafting purpose one. These are not my sewing scissors, they're similar looking though. I have one that's only dedicated to fabric. Because I don't want my fabric scissors touching hot glue and cutting through PVC and having all that abuse and wearing out the blade. You want really nice sharp scissors to cut fabric. It will save you a lot of headache in the long run. Um, so basic adhesives you'll, that are the most common when it comes to building these is um, hot glue. This will be your staple because it's cheap, um, relatively non-toxic. There's some chemistry that you probably don't want to know about. Um, and it's, it's easy to use. Um, we found anywhere. I was going to grab one of the sticks to show you. Yeah, sure thing. Go ahead. Um, and going back to some tools once our screen comes up, there's also extension. It's better to get like the bigger hot glue stuff because it's... Bigger hot glue guns because you are going to be using so much glue, you're going to be changing out those glue sticks constantly. The little mini sticks aren't going to cut it after a while, especially on a long day of, of, of deal building. Yes, um, big industrial guns, like the one I actually have already oh, there. Yeah, yeah, is um, was my favorite investment so far. Um, it was $20 at Home Depot. But this, this gun heats up glue very, very hot, which is again why I have the uh, scar here. Um, but if I always have nice liquid hot glue ready when I need it. And this kind of uh, trigger here is so much easier to use than the little tiny holes. I cannot tell you how much that sucks. I recommend this glue gun or any more industrial sized one that has the bigger sticks. Don't get the little $5 um, crafty ones at the store because they, wear they out explode. Really fast. They will literally explode. There has been people that have had some little bit of accidents from that. Nothing terribly serious, but scary nonetheless. They are made cheaply, and you have a question really quick. Um, about the big industrial yes. size food gun, how is that with like little tiny details? Oh, it's great with tiny details as well. It has a tiny little nozzle. You can control the flow of glue very, very well. I use it for absolutely everything. The, I can see there may be some points where you're trying to get a very specific little space, and a bigger gun is just going to be a little bit more awkward and bulk to try to get in there. At that point, yes, I would recommend using a small little glue gun, but don't rely on that as your main gun. I have a three or four guns, actually, and if it's like a really big project, I'll plug in more than one at once. Another adhesive to continue the conversation mm -hmm. is um, a spray adhesive, like the Elmer Kluger adhesive that's in a little canister. It's good for applying like, two very large sheets of foam together that's not going to be near the face because it is somewhat toxic and you don't want to have toxic stuff here because then you're breathing that in and you don't want to breathe toxic fumes in. Safety first! Exactly, safety. Um, but it's great for you to have really large pieces of foam together with tiny little glue strands and not just going to cut it. Um, I did that with Shadow Week of Wings, basically sandwiching my arm, and I had to spray here that entire thing because it was just not working with glue. A glue can leave very hard, crusty glue in between your pieces of foam, and that can sometimes affect the way it bends or moves. So in that case, it might let a spray piece of certain parts of your costume. Um, yeah. um, there's sewing tools. You want a sewing machine. If you don't, if you can't afford one, you can borrow one from a family. You can. Um, go to a local sewing machine. Sewing machine repair a lot of times sells them. Mm -hmm. um, you can also buy a small sewing kit. You can get a small one for like five bucks. It'll hold you over for a while. Then when you get a sewing machine, you have an emergency sewing kit. <laughs> See? You learn how to hand sew. It's not very difficult. Time consuming, but not difficult. 
Um, as an example, uh, my entire costume is hand sewn. <laughs> so is mine. Yeah. 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 It'll be just as strong as a machine stitch if you do it properly. Yeah. Just take your time with it. That's the way to do it properly. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Now we get to the construction part. Woo! Yeah. More fun part. Uh, you guys all know. Is our water less of her expertise with this. Mm -hmm. um, I had a little bit of trouble, but um, she'll explain everything Alrighty. well. Right? So, if you want to do any sort of bodysuit on your costume, the number one recommended way to do this is it called a duct tape dummy. I don't know if you ever tried trying to pick up a pattern from the store and try to do all your measurements and all of the pattern to fit you. Just don't <laughs> deal with it if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> In fact, it is so much easier this way, I'm probably not going to touch a store-bought pattern for body suits again. What it does is it duplicates the surface area of your body. It makes a clone mini you that will sit there in front of you nicely while you admire it and you build right onto its skin. You can't do that on yourself. I don't recommend that either. <laughs> Don't sell things to yourself. It hurts. Yeah, that, that. Oh, yeah. Unless you're trying to be that guy from Dante's Inferno, don't do it. No. <laughs> it's the best aid for getting a perfectly fitted bodysuit. And perfectly, I mean not just to your skin, but perfectly to all your foam work padding as well. And we'll get into how to pattern around construction pieces later. Basic things we want to just kind of briefly go over. We're not going to tell you how to do it step by step. But there are plenty of tutorials and resources online. First of all, don't duct tape it to your skin. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> You're going to need a good close friend as helpers. I recommend two because it goes a lot faster that way. And I mean close because... <laughs> You're cutting yourself out of the clothes. Like, what you want to do is wear clothes and duct tape over the old clothes. And then you want to cut through both duct tape and clothes. So you'll be wearing your underwear when you're finished, so you want close friends? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, it'll take about one and a half hours or so of work time. Depending on how many helpers you have or how fast you're going, you can try to take your time. Use the restroom beforehand. Yes, please do, because you don't want to be holding it for like two hours <laughs> in a hot, hot duct tape suit. It's stiff and not fun. Yes. Make this as nice on you as possible. Uh, you'll need two or three large rolls of duct tape, and I stress large and more than you need. Only because you don't want to be standing there with a half taped arm holding to hold this. Oh! You ran out of duct tape. Then they have to go out to like Walmart or Home Depot to go get it, and that's like an extra 20 minutes. And you don't want to be doing this for 20 minutes. Like, it, it gets tired. Exactly. We would suggest starting with the legs and go up. Because you do need to have your arms up to the side like this. This is how clothes are made as well. It so allows you the best range of movement in your arms. So, yes, tutorials will tell you the step by step and a little bit more, make sure you do this, this, this. But these are general stuff. Be safe, be smart, and do a good job. This will help you immensely if you get take the time to do it. And we move on to working with foam, which is pretty much your skeleton. Yeah, foam. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Obviously, I told you this is upholstery foam, and it is a type of open cell foam. This is my main, main construction tool that I use for everything. Um, it is great, like I said before, for more, we need more support in a mask versus the white stuff over there, which isn't as supportive, but I mean, it works just great. And um, it's going to build up your main forms. Uh, I put this example up here. This is a Velociraptor costume my friend Motoyashi was creating. And the white foam on there is actually not the stuff on the table. It's actually this black stuff. It does come oh, white. It's insulated foam. It's 100% permeable. So if you have it like this, you pour water, this way, it'll go straight through the other side. It also means air does too, guys. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. 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 And that's what you go all of that out of. So there's a lot more airflow in the lake because that much padding is going to cause some heat issues. Foam is insulating. It gets very hot. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, they can probably tell you. And that's nice. We can tell you it like. But the only times I think you can always understand that fact, but we're going to put a drill in your brains anyway. Just make sure you do as much as you can about it. Tools for foam. Scissors. Cut foam. Done. Um, scissors are probably going to be your number one tool when you're sculpting with foam. Um, to get a nice rounded shape, for example, I'll just cut out a little piece here. And you don't want to, and you can't have scissors cut more than about one inch foam. If you go to two inch, you're going to have problems because scissors pinch rather than just what? It'll make a weird shape when you cut it. Mm -hmm. They can do neat things with that mechanic, but that's more It's a little bit more advanced technique. 
okay, let's say I'm going to make this rounded. Well, all you got to do is start on the corner here and just cut at a like 45 degree angle. Okay, it's starting to look a little bit better. I just kind of go through and I shape this thing. Okay, I'm going to make, I don't know, a figure. Just kind of make this up as I go. When you cut this phone, though, be sure you have something to clean it up with because it will get everywhere. Like it's everywhere. Yep. All right, now I've got sort of round shape starting. Maybe it's going to be a finger. Yeah, it's a finger now. Um, it's just going to take scissors for just shaping it slowly over time. And we'll explain a little bit more about how to use some uh, techniques like that in a little bit. Yep, like exacto knives do work to get out a general like square, but you don't want to do it for fine detail for the most part. Um, there's another thing you can use, which is a carving knife. She likes to call it something else. Electric knife. Electric knife. <laughs> I've never put it back in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's the kind that carves turkey and meat and bread, whatever. Yes, it's going to become your crafting knife. Again, tools and their proper use and safety, all that. Yeah, don't want to be using it, on phone it cuts through foam. It cuts through foam like butter, though. It is a little bit tricky to get the hang of how it will work because it's an electric tool. It kind of feels like it's going to run off on its own sometimes. But if you're patient with it, you can learn to do some amazing, really cool stuff with it. And it will save you so much time in trying to cut there with the exact knife by hand. You just go, <laughs> Those are the two big tools, anyway. Um, it's like uh, the end got cut off. But what I do, um, there's two different techniques, which is sculptative. Um, additive and subtractive sculpting. I like to explain it. The same thing as if you're ever been working with clay, sculpture, it's the same principle. Um, here you can see it very clearly. This is my aerodactyl mask, the second one I've ever done. Um, for the muzzle, I had, I believe it's one inch, it could be two. Actually, I think two inches in the middle and one might be on the side. I can't tell from here. No, nope, it's all the side. It was a long time ago. I put three pieces together. Um, basically, I kind of start with one shape. Okay, I know exactly what I want this shape to look like on the side. I'm going to copy that three times over. That's added. I added that foam to my head base, which will display some head bases in a little bit as well. But now it looks like a really blocky square thing. Doesn't look good. So you want to <laughs> fix that problem very fast. And I did all that subtractive work with the scissors. A lot of time it's going to be slow going, trying to kind of find your shapes as you go along. I am, luckily foam is very forgiving. If you accidentally cut too far, you mess up, you go, oh no, I dug too deep in it, take some foam, glue it back on. Yep. You start again. Just be wanting the more glue you add onto it, the thicker and harder it is to cut through, because you have to cut through the glue as well. I might end up with a tumor right here. <laughs> yeah. We are not doing a lot of tumor heads. No. And you can see here, my reference is right in front of me as I work, on the floor. I don't know. <laughs> Not the best workspace, but yes. And then the uh, final result with the phone work there. Um, there's some other techniques. Um, Mario Yasha had a really neat idea. Um, you, I can't remember the exact word for that. Right off the top of my head. Darts. Darts, that's what it is. Sorry. Darts. Mind fart. Um, yeah, you cut the darts and then you fold it over so it makes a nice dome shape and you glue it all together. Darts are used in fabric uh, patterning all of the time. They're the way that you can get rounded things out of flat things. As you can clearly see in this example, it's probably the easiest one we can probably give you because it's foam. It's a little bit more, has more body in it than a fabric foot. And um, then we have another example over there. It, they just stack two pieces of foam. And it's very interesting. I haven't seen this technique before, so I'm still trying to learn this one a little bit more. I found it like just the other week, but it's another unit, another way to do it. So you don't have to do it. Everyone else's think outside the box. Yeah. You know, standard steel. There's another thing that I found one of my friends because he thought it was building a grub, a uh, Bowser cosplay, and found a good way to do the shell. This, what's great about costuming is there's not one way to do anything. And here they took it looks like a flying saucer, like you know, for you go where it slides down, slide slide down the snow. Yeah. It's very lightweight, cheap plastic. And they put it up. They put some straps on their back. They covered it in some foam, and they took that piping, mm -hmm. uh, foam stuff that covers piping. Yeah, the insulating and, foam that yeah. goes around piping, so it doesn't freeze on it. Yeah, <laughs> and voila, Bowser shell. Yep, it looks pretty good. Um,